That's a pretty big stage. Phew. Hello, everyone. This thing, ah, OK, works. Perfect. So yeah, welcome, everyone. Um, I want to give you a quick introduction into running a static WordPress website. Um, let me quickly introduce myself a little bit further. And there are not that many bullet points here, but I'm sure it's fine. So I'm a WordPress developer since 2010. And I'm also the developer behind Simply Static, which is a static site generator plugin for WordPress. We will see a quick uh, view into it in a minute. Um, I'm also a solopreneur, which means I'm running a plugin business full time, selling, maintaining, building plugins, and so on. So, yeah, let's get started with static WordPress. So, yeah, the start is pretty obviously. So, we have to make our WordPress website static. What means static? Um, we take our dynamic WordPress website and make convert it back into HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and obviously your image files, pretty much like 1999, but in a good way. So I built this little plugin called Simply Static. Um, you can see a screenshot on the right hand side of the screen, um, and the generation process is pretty much straightforward. So you can install it for free from the WordPress org repository, activate it go to simply static generate and there's a big purple button labeled generate static files and you can click on it and the process starts running. Um, depending on the size of the website, it might take a while. So I would suggest for testing purposes, you might take a, a little bit um, a, 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 a simpler website to get started. Um, once the process is finished, you will get a download link where you can click on and it will download the zip file containing all the static files. So next step, um, let's talk about hosting. Um, it's a little bit different compared to what you might be used to when it comes to traditional WordPress hosting um, because you don't need an actual database and you probably don't even need to have WordPress hosted somewhere so, and instead use like something like local WP. Um, so where do you host my static website? Well, that depends a little bit on how familiar you are with certain concepts. Um, for example, GitHub. So if you're familiar with GitHub and you know the basics to upload your files to a GitHub repository and connect it, I would suggest using GitHub pages or Cloudflare pages. Let's see, two at, two at the top. Um, because they are free, they are pretty powerful, and you get a lot out of the box <laughs> without having to worry about things like caching and so on. Um, if you aren't familiar with GitHub and you're looking for the quickest way to get started, I would suggest starting with Netlify. Netlify provides a little drag and drop zip uploader where you can simply drag and drop the zip file you got from Simply Static and upload it to Netlify and you immediately get your static website running on a temporary domain that you can use. You can always switch on your uh, preferred domain later. Um, if you're a fan of traditional deployment, um, which means using SFTP and copying over your files, you can do that as well. Um, the, bo the two most popular options here are DigitalOcean Spaces and obviously Amazon S3. So now that we have a static version of our website and we have probably already deployed it to a hosting provider, um, let's take a quick look at some dynamic features and how we can make them work on a static WordPress website. So, yeah, pretty much every website these days has some kind of form, be it a contact form or a newsletter sign-up. And you still want to use, like, a contact form on your static website, sure. So there are different ways you can handle that. There are external tools you can use, but um, in my talk, I'd like to prove um, I like to stay to WordPress as close as possible. So we're using Contact Form 7. There's a free plugin um, available for Contact Form 7, which is called CF7 to Webhook, that you can use to offload the submitted data from um, the form the user has submitted on the front end to an external webhook. A pretty popular service you might already know is Zapier. Zapier is like a no-code automation tool and you can send off the, the data from the contact form to Zapier, and in Zapier you can configure, um, get all the data, convert it to an email, and send it to me. 
Um, so this way your traditional WordPress website isn't involved anymore in the steps and you can still use and style and modify your form based on Contact Form 7 as you already used to. The next popular thing is search. So the traditional WordPress search works with PHP and URL parameters um, and both will not work on a static website. So we need some kind of replacement. While there are a lot of different tools in the, for the use case and some of them are pretty powerful and some of them are simpler, I chose the simplest one, which is Google Custom Search Engine. Google Custom Search Engine is like a um, little external tool. You can sign up for free and uh, you get like a little API key that you can use. And in combination with the plugin mentioned, WP Google Search, um, the only thing you have to do is copy in the uh, API key and save the settings, and you get a shortcode and return that you can place anywhere on, the web on your website. And it will render a little search box um, already available with auto-suggest. So once a user types something in, um, search results will pop up if he uh, hits enter or clicks on the little search icon provided. Um, it will open a pop-up which contains search results from Google but limited to your own domain, which is important because you don't want your competitors in, the, in your own search results, right? So, yeah, that's pretty much the second important part. Now we have covered the basics and you probably have a question in your mind. Um, why the hell should I use a static website? So why the extra effort and what are the benefits? So let's quickly cover them. Um, one thing that a lot of people already know is that static WordPress websites are pretty fast. That's because there is no database interaction, there is no dynamic processing, um, everything is already generated and we just deliver the static file and the optimized assets to the user or to the user's browser. So speed is obvious, but the impact on the performance is even higher if you compare it to a bigger website. Let's say you have a um, traditional business website, but translated into seven languages. Depending on the plugin um, or on the, on the framework you've used to do that, that might take some time for the user to get the translated page. So to um, speed that up, we can pre um, pre-generate and pre-convert the uh, HTML files for each language. And once the user switch the language, he automatically gets the translated HTML page back. And that is a lot faster than compared to a traditional uh, multilingual website, even with a powerful caching and some kind of premium hosting. Um, another important benefit, for me even more important than speed, but I know every, everyone is uh, kind of hyped about performance, um, is security. So a static website is almost unhackable. Why? Yeah, because um, a hacker doesn't have any um, exploit vector that he can use to inject malicious code into your website or try to inject some additional styles or whatsoever. Um, so because your website is static and your database and WordPress is either offline or protected behind basic of uh, end or a firewall, um, a hacker will have a pretty hard time to do anything relevant to your website as long as it's static. Um, the third point, and I'm sure you agree with me, is maintenance. So updating a WordPress website can be a pretty daunting task, especially if it's not your main business. Let's say the average business with a website um, how often do people take care of updates? There are several plugin security updates each week. There are multiple WordPress updates each year. Maybe your theme is updated each month. Who knows? So it's cool if everything works as, as expected if you click update, but that's not always the case. So if you have a static website, you have like a snapshot in time. So you have your static website running no matter what happens. It will remain unchanged. On the other side, you have your WordPress website, which is now practically a free staging environment for you to update, to test, to do whatever you want. And only if you're happy with the results and you have tested everything, you will update the static website and get the updated changes to your official website, so to say. Um, there are a couple of other benefits. Um, I tried to keep it short. <laughs> 
Um, one I like to mention is uh, cost reduction. So I'm sure we can argue about that, but I would say premium WordPress hosting is kind of expensive, um, especially if you want something secure, reliable, uh, automated backups uh, done for you. So compared to that, static hosting is insanely cheap. So we're talking about, depending on the website site and service, about one euro or dollar per month or even per year, depending on the traffic, the, site of the, the size of the website, the amount of pages and so on. Um, another thing, it's not really a benefit, but a question I often get um, is the difference between headless and uh, static WordPress. Headless WordPress often use Jamstack, which uh, requires to rebuild your existing website or build a new design based on a modern JavaScript framework like React or Vue.js uh, or Svelte or whatever. Um, while as static WordPress is a static replication of your existing website. So you will still use your existing tools, your existing theme, your existing plugins. You may have to adjust one or, the, or another, but all in all, it's your WordPress website um, replicated as a static one that you can use right away without any technical requirements involved. So that's all for me. Um, one thing I like to note is, uh, sadly, I missed to add the download link um, to the presentation. Um, I collected a pretty detailed page uh, containing all kinds of tutorials, um, additional links and resources. I will share it in a minute on Twitter, but if you see me running around, um, there's a QR code on my back. You can scan it, and there's a link to the resource page where you can download the presentation and all the additional information. So that's all from me. Thanks for your attention, and have a good day. <laughs>